Welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you here today for RES Media's broker webinar series. Uh, we'll be getting started in just a minute here. All right, fantastic. Let's jump in. Well, welcome everyone. Thanks again for joining. We've got a very hot topic today and a panel of just absolute rock star broker owners who will be lending their expertise. So it should be a very great, uh, very valuable session. Um, I'll go ahead and kick things off with a brief introduction. My name is Alyssa Harper. I run sales and marketing for Inside Real Estate. We're the company behind the number one rated real estate tech platform in the industry, KV Core. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with Kiwi Core, it's really a one-stop shop to help your agents and teams manage and grow their business. We really leverage AI and intelligent automation to put their business growth on autopilot. And we're now proud to support over 400,000 top agents, teams, and brokerages across the US and Canada, including some of the fastest growing and most productive brands in the space, folks like Remax, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, EXP and more. So if you're looking for ways that technology can help streamline your day and really increase agent productivity, you can go check us out at insiderealestate.com. All right, without further ado, let's jump in and introduce you to your panelists. First up, we've got Anthony Lamakia. Anthony is CEO and broker owner of Lamakia Real Estate, uh, which now spans multiple states, also in property management, development and training and systems. You guys have probably heard of Anthony through his very popular Crush It in Real Estate series. He's a true industry expert, dozens of television appearances and speaking engagements with NAR, Zillow, Inman, and more. Anthony, we're lucky to have you here today. Say hello to everyone. Thank you. Happy to be here with you all and excited to talk about this topic. Wonderful. Next up, we've got my good friend Ken Barris. Ken is president and CEO of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Jordan Barris Realty in New Jersey. Ken, you're one of the most influential and innovative leaders that I've been fortunate enough to work with. You are a three-time RES Media Newsmaker of the Year Award recipient um, and just really a legend in the space. We're happy to have you here today. Say hello, Ken. Uh Thrilled to be here. All those accolades, and I still have to empty the dishwasher at home. So, <laughs> well, we're lucky we get some time with you here today. And last but certainly not least, we've got Willie Miranda. Willie is the president and broker owner of Miranda Real Estate Group. Uh, Willie's got more than 24 years of experience in the industry, 31 years of experience in the insurance industry. Uh, he and his team have sold over 10,000 homes worth more than $2 billion in real estate sales. He's also worked with and coached hundreds of agents across the country. So we're really lucky to have you here with us today, lending some of your insights. Welcome, Willie. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. Fantastic. All right, well, before we dive into our discussion, um, just two quick housekeeping items. If you're on and you've got questions, of course, all of our attendees are muted. So just feel free to jump into the questions panel on GoToWebinar drop those in we'll try and tackle some at the end of our call and then this one always comes up yes the webinar will be recorded we'll email a link to this uh, session later today so don't feel like you need to be frantically write notes or anything you will get a recording of our session all right well let's get into it um bold title will 250,000 agents leave the business let's maybe spend a minute and just kind of talk about what that really means so for context, NAR tells us that over 150,000 people became real estate agents in 2020 and 2021. Um, it's a big number, that's more than 60% more than the two years prior. And even with that massive number of new agents entering the business, I think most would probably agree that 2021 was one of their strongest years ever in real estate, right? Well, fast forward a year, we're in a very different kind of climate, very different market conditions. Transaction volume is, is down, right? So what does that mean? Are we gonna have a mass exodus of agents? Are those headlines hype? Is that reality? Um, and if so, is that necessarily a bad thing? Would love your guys' take on this. Anthony, let's start with you. What do you think? My quick answer is yes, and I actually think it'll be more. And I think that it's somewhat necessary. Uh, there's just been too many people that have gotten in and it, it got a little too easy to sell three or four homes a year. And now we're getting back to a market where you need to be an expert and you need to take it serious. Um, so that's my quick answer. Couldn't agree more. 
in, you know, publicly, we've heard the CEOs of national brokerages saying, I've never experienced a market like this before. Not sure what's going to happen. And, you know, Willie's around 25 years. I'm around over 30 years. Anthony's around, you know, like 25 years or so doing this. And we've seen a lot of changes in the markets. And these changes create the best opportunities because when it's so easy, everyone can prosper. And when it gets a little challenging, the opportunity to have your quantum leap exists right now. And if you can do it by making your associates stronger instead of just doing it wholesale by trying to bring in more people to to uh, feed the fire as opposed to get the fire stronger by having uh, improvement to your individual associates, more and more people are going to join you anyway, and you're going to have a much better foundation. So, so much opportunity. Lots will leave and the playing field will shift. I love that. With change comes opportunity. Great line, Ken. Willie, what about you? What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, like Ken said, we've been in the business for a number of years, and we watched this. Uh, we watched this movie before, and we know how it ends, right? Uh, people are gonna leave after really good markets because we just made it look too easy. Uh, but what I found is that a lot of agents that got into the business over the last couple of years, they got in because they were interested in real estate. They weren't committed. Uh, the ones that were committed are the ones that are going to do okay in this industry, just like in any market. Uh, but too many agents got in just because they thought it was, you know, a fun thing to do. And they, you know, maybe got laid off from their prior job or whatever the situation may be. And just too many agents out there were interested, not committed. And I think, uh, you know, that, that number is probably going to hold true. If not more, I agree with Anthony. Interested, not committed. That's a good way of thinking about it. Well, good insights, you guys. Let's shift gears and get into um, some actionable takeaways. What what broker owners should be doing to kind of navigate this change in the market? So I think we can all agree that one of the strongest levers you have to keep agents loyal and with your brokerage is to help them be more productive, right? And yet with so many new agents having entered the business, many of them have really never been in this type of a market. They've never had to navigate these market conditions, right? Um, how are you helping coach and educate and guide agents to be successful in the market they're in today? Anthony, let's maybe start with you on this one. Well, I think the biggest thing that broker owners should be going over with their agents is what it's like to list a listing and have it not sell in a half an hour. Actually manage your listing and be in touch with your seller, go over feedback with them, show them updated comps in the neighborhood, have conversations about price adjustments and all of those kinds of things. Because in the last two years, I'm even seeing good agents that have been doing this 10 years that are like, geez, I forgot what it was like to do an open house when only three people showed up. And I'm like, when I was selling, which was 2006 to 2011, I did tons of open houses that no one showed up. And that conversation with your seller is always a fun one when they're like, well, did you advertise it correctly back in those days? Did you put it in the Boston Sunday Globe? Like when sellers start asking and they start poking holes in what you're doing, what marketing you're doing or not doing, because remember, here's the thing, folks. And this is a good script to say to a seller when their home isn't selling. Us realtors get more credit than we deserve when homes sell fast. That's just the truth. More credit than we deserve when homes sell fast homes sell fast and we get more blame than we deserve when homes don't sell that's just the nature of the business it's never going to change it's always going to be both of those extremes so now we're going from being hero for two years to being zero to some sellers and you have to know how to manage that and set expectations correctly put a seller on the path for potentially a price adjustment keep that seller engaged so they don't just want to fire you you don't lose the listing it doesn't expire and that takes a little bit of this thing called work. We, we've been doing a lot of talking to our team and we've sort of poured it on. We have lunchtime learnings every Tuesdays at noon, Friday power hours every Friday mornings at nine. And we don't require people to come in, you know, they're filled, hybrid and, vir you know, vir hybrid, so virtual and in person. And we're doing things like, yeah, saying you have all these tools, now it's time to use them. I'll give you one example, which is we call the five a day. We tell people to put five people a day into their CRM that they came because we had it, now we want them to use it. 
And so uh, we use KV Core, and you put in a client, their name, their email, their address, send market report, and every 28 days, a seller gets a great email with the value of their property, the hottest listing, the most expensive listing, the newest listings, and what's sold. Buy candy and really interesting and makes you, you know, connected. And it will, if you do five a day as an associate, 25 a week, 100 a month, that's 1,200 in a year. If you get 30 people that do that, that's 30,000. So as a broker, just inspiring five a day, because you can't get people to put 1,000 people at a time, but you can create the muscle memory that every day, if it's in their calendar. And so there's different tasks we're starting to get people to do, and then we're tying them to accountability partners to talk to each other to make sure those things get done. And the impact, if somebody adds 1,000 neighbors, uh, and friends and it all it just over the course of a year their life is going to change so it's really about saying units are going to be down 20 percent we're going to have to increase your business by more than 20 percent so we have to do something different how about use the tools and that's just one tiny example of the many things that we're doing and you know thanks for the partnership that you have because you know you certainly Alyssa, have made it easy for us with this infrastructure with the, you know I love that, that compound consistency. It's kind of, it's getting back to basics, right? But to Anthony's point, for the last couple of years, so many agents have not had to employ those principles, right? Even, even around promoting listings that they do have, right? That's one of the best assets you have to generate new business, generate new leads. Um, but they've been able to kind of take some shortcuts or, you know, the property sold within 24 hours. So you're not having that opportunity, so. Love that feedback. Willie, how about you? I know you're you're big on, on coaching, on accountability, on recognition within your agent base. What are some of the, the things that you're deploying to increase agent productivity? Yeah, we, we've gone with a three-prong approach with really leads, generating leads, teaching them how to do more leads. Like Anthony said, going back to basics. They don't, a lot of them don't even know how to pick up the phone or what to say, right? Scripts, dialogues, those type of things. So lead generation, number one. Number two, training. Training is so important, doubling down on that. Uh, just doing a lot of different things, not only training that we do uh, normally, but now we're bringing people in, doing six-week accountability groups. Uh, we're doing 20, um, top 20% mastermind because some of the top uh, agents within our company, they want to mastermind amongst each other uh, and just really focusing on getting their production to the next level, right? Uh, because it is going to require them going back to the basics, increasing their activities to do that. And then the third prong is support, right? Giving them that support so that we can take a lot of those uh, activities or, or, or things that they're spending all this time on, right? Doing flyers or trying to come up with all these different marketing ideas where we have the marketing in, in place, we have the support so they can go and do what they do best, which is picking up that phone and making sales. And really, I, I, we just haven't really focused on lead generation, like I said, uh, working on listings or getting more listings, work with buyers, and the last thing is really getting focused on being better at negotiations. And that's going to be all with scripts and dialogues, right? They have to not negotiate price reductions. You know, Anthony, I know I saw a couple of your videos here recently with how to talk to that seller now to get that price reduction. That's a whole different conversation than anyone's been used to over the last couple of years. So it's going back to those basics. I love that. Two things I want to just double click on because this is this is gold here, you guys. Um, one, you know, you mentioned agents spending so much of their time on things like social media and stuff that could be, you know, automated so that they can focus their energy on those conversations they should be having with buyers and sellers. What what role does technology play in that? What tools are you, you know, employing for your agents and your teams to help free up some of their time and maybe automate some of the stuff that you don't want them spending time on? Um, Ken, Anthony, any feedback there? Yeah, um, I want to mention something else. Before, when you asked what should broker owners be doing, I immediately went after talking to agents about how to deal with sellers. Price pricing, I always say, uh, in, a, in a slow market, if you learn how to do pricing and price adjustments well, you won't only survive, you'll thrive, because very few agents are good at those two things. But on the flip side, we've been dealing with a two-year, two-and-a-half-year period of buyers having FOMO at a level that I've never seen. I mean, the fear of missing out among buyers has been substantial. Well, now, what is it like to have a conversation with a buyer who doesn't feel FOMO, who doesn't have a problem saying, eh, if I don't buy it, 
that's a that's a whole new conversation to many agents and there's a lot of agents that are like what do i do now to answer your direct question as far as technology goes i'm a big believer in crms you know that we've talked about it and i know you guys have a tremendous product um the only reason we're not on it is we custom built our own 10 years ago and we've stuck with it but if we weren't we i'm sure we'd be working with you guys but how about the basics you know willie always talks about that i i, I think willie just says get back to the basics he says it all the time because he's right because agents get get distracted with so many different things it's like no no no. do what ken said enter five contacts a day and then on your active buyer leads that you're working on how about schedule follow-ups and how about schedule follow-ups i'm always preaching this not just to say hey you ready are you ready to buy yet are you ready to sell it drives me nuts when agents do that how about send them a piece of content that educates them on what the hell is going on something that educates them on where rates are at or um the, i just did a video this morning on the two one buy down program right that that's a hit that's getting buyers off the sideline i did a six minute video breaking down all the numbers and i, I told our agents send that stuff out so mixing the tech with reminders, with automating emails, sending out educational materials, with actually action steps. You put those two together, I don't care what market it is, you're gonna do well. The only difference right now is we're in a changing market and you have to keep up with the pace of the change or beat the pace of the change, or at least for a period of time, you're gonna have a hard time. Uh, so smart, you know, we're doing very similar with our, our mortgage company. We're coaching sellers, we have a, a two, to one buy down program and we're asking the sellers to pay and saying much better than a price adjustment is to pay two points to make the rate lower to make your property more desirable. So, and that's just something, that's nothing new. We did that years ago and we did that years before that. And as rates were higher, we just had sellers make the rate lower and then show people the articles about rates when they come down, you'll be able to refinance. So. It's really just creating the opportunity. The other thing we look at, like with social media, so we use uh, ACE, you know, RES has ACE, and we use that, which is very general social media about real estate, but it might be, you know, spring cleanup uh, because it's generic to real estate. Then we use SOCI, which is specific to our brand, you know, we're Berkshire franchise, and so it's Berkshire kind of things. But then we have somebody internally who makes custom, like uh, every Thursday, we have a, a new testimonial, and it's Testimonial Thursday, where we showcase um, a review or a letter or something that somebody sent about one of our associates. And not just new listing and new sale, but we do a lot of media about who says the market's slow. Darren Nurse just had three contracts this week. And so using the very personal showcasing. And then finally, the last, you know, in the KV core, we have the ability to put a uh, engine for what's your property worth that goes to LinkedIn and goes to Facebook and Instagram. And we use that engine to drive um, leads. But by having this four prong approach, property value, individuals, um, generic to our brand and generic to the industry, it just creates a lot more content and more eyeballs and so more interest when we get to those things and makes us more memorable and it's driving leads. And then finally, boosting properties. Maybe we didn't have to a little while ago. Now we're boosting listings and we're getting amazing results with that also. And um, it, it's, it's fun to make case studies. If you can see two similar properties that are listed and you have a better result, like we have that now in the town of South Orange, two new constructions listed next to each other and ours did amazing and was sold. We listed ours later and the one next to it hadn't sold. So, you know, things like that create talking points and create testimonials and create videos and, you know, make it uh, very real for people and it inspires the consumers, which inspires your associates. Love that. Key takeaways I'm hearing, you know, let's get away from the, static drip campaigns and generic content and really be informing and educating and adding value to the consumers, right? And then, hey, how can you leverage technology to disseminate that out, right? Whether that's social media, whether that's video messaging, blasting out some text messages, right? Really getting that and spreading the word and, and hopefully doing that in an automated way so that you're not spending a ton of time to disseminate some of that great education and content. 
Well, I, I want to add something. I want to yeah. add something. It's about it's about taking action, right? We've said we've all said that a bunch of times. I'm sitting here with, and I was going to say a notepad, but sticky notes. Both Willie and Ken and you made me think of things that I jotted down. A couple of them were do this. A couple of them were check in on that. When we're done, I'll be on top of these things within 10 minutes. I'm, I don't have a tomorrow attitude, a next week attitude. Or the best one right now is after the holidays. Oh God! After the holidays, I am going to do what I know I should be doing now. But to put it off now, I'm just going to say after the holidays drives me up the wall. Doesn't come out of my mouth. Uh, and, and I believe that, Anthony. I know you're great on social. You hold yourself accountable. You hold your team accountable. I love that. You know, it's funny. We we used to talk about in the days when people used to have like uh, folders on their desks when it, you didn't do it on uh, everything online or should be. So it's on your phone and everywhere. And they, they were, people used to have a, a things to do tomorrow uh, folder. And we always said, rename that things I should have done yesterday. And, you know, don't be comfortable. And when you, you know, leave the office, that folder should be empty. And, you know, you need to do it now attitude. And execution is much more important now than ever. And everything's got to go in your calendar. We all know a goal is not a goal unless it's in writing. And, uh, you know, things that you say you're going to do, they're not really tasks. They're just thoughts until you have it down. And, you can't let things slip through the cracks and uh, it's really critical and you can use all types of tools and things to help with that. Um, but you need to do it. You need systems. You need your process. Systems and execution. I love it. There was a line I heard just the other day um, around, do you really need more information or do you need to take action on the information you already have? Right? So it's all about action. It's all about execution. Uh, well, let's keep the conversation going here. Let's maybe skip ahead and put kind of our operating hat on and talk a little bit about what you can be doing as a brokerage to really, I'm going to steal this phrase from you, Anthony, play to win versus playing not to lose, right? So where, where should you think about playing defense and maybe having some cost savings in your brokerage as you kind of weather this changing market? And where should you be doubling down and really investing to come out ahead of your competition? I'll go ahead and take that to start. I mean, one of the things that I think a lot of us, um, at least from a broker side, I think that we always need to be having our agents in some type of sales contest. We, I mean, we contest every month, every quarter. We have contests that are going on. We just wrapped up a contest now at the end of the month. And it's on things that we're looking for, right? If it's listings we're looking for, if it's getting them to training, if it's um, you know more buyer contracts, more relocation, whatever it is, we get points on that. And then we have a grab bag, a money grab bag at the end. And then first prize wins 500 bucks. Second prize wins 300. Third prize wins 150. And it's not about the money. Uh, we have salespeople, right? We're a sales organization. So we have to have sales contests because they want that public recognition. They want to win. So, you know, playing to win is by having these contests and giving these agents the opportunity to win, even though they might not be doing the same business they were doing last year or, you know, hitting these big goals that they wanted to hit. But the fact that they can go in there and be recognized uh, that way and actually have a controllable, right? Maybe it's on personal notes one year we did. Another time it was on, um, you know, how many dials that they did. So you just make it based on what you're looking for. Uh, the other part of the recognition piece is, you know, in our meetings, we recognize them. Um, uh, every week I send out a good news video email to all the agents of anyone that did like two or more transactions or they had a deal pending or a closing uh, or they had a birthday or they had an anniversary. like. That all ties into retention. And I think that a lot of it, you know, with growing our agencies, retention, I think, is more important than the recruiting side, right? Because we're just kind of keep recruiting, but we forget all the people that are here. We're not going to, we're going to be shrinking. So uh, I think sales contests and the agent recognition with videos that go out company wide, but also at our meetings, has played a big part uh, in our retention and winning. That's so true, Willie. And it's, you know, it's such an interesting dynamic in real estate because you have these, you know, very entrepreneurial individuals who operate with a lot of times quite a bit of autonomy in their business, right? But they're part of your brokerage for a reason, right? They want that culture. They want that camaraderie and community. And so I love that you guys are, are really, you know, being intentional about that focus. That's great. Ken, Anthony, thoughts on, from an operation standpoint, again, where are you kind of cutting back? Where are you doubling down? 
I can uh, I can jump in. You know, the defense offense comment is the one that I've been making, and I actually just made it down the hall in a training. And you know, I was fortunate to. I have not been in the business 25 years, 18. I just want to point that out. Um, awesome. But I've been I've been buying and selling for close to that, so so Ken's not too far off. But one of the things that I observed growing up in a family business is when things get tough, you can overcut and and hurt yourself, you know, overcut on your expenses. So what I really have been evaluating over the last six months and the areas that we've been cutting back have been areas that are specific to, okay, that particular branch office had three, um, I'm making up a hypothetical example, but maybe it had three office, uh, an office manager, two administrative assistants because they were doing a hundred and something sales a month in that one office. Well, when that turns into 60 sales a month, that one office no longer needs three people. So either someone's got to get moved somewhere else or someone's got to get let go. Or when someone leaves the company for, you know, we have lots of people. So there's always people moving or relocating or whatever, sometimes getting into another industry. Maybe we don't replace the position. So we have thinned out, this is the defense side. We have thinned out the amount of staff in the branch offices because per branch, we're not doing as much, right? We have 11 branch offices. but in some areas, we've hired more. We just went through with hiring our finally an in-house general counsel, someone I've been talking to for a year. He signed up in May. The deal was for him to start in November. He called me in June. No, he called me in the summer and he says, you sure you still want me? The market's slowing down. I said, I don't care. We're, we're, we're spending money on lawyers. We're, there's preventative things we should be doing. Get on the bus, right? Then down in Connecticut, uh, one of you mentioned how we just opened in Connecticut and we have a big walkover going on down there. We had 18 agents walk over last week. We got another probably 10 to 20-ish within a few weeks, I think we'll be walking over. Down there, there's a company having some trouble. We hired their top two executives. They came over and people are coming behind them. So there we're going on offense. But in certain areas where we're defending a bit and decreasing some expenses. So I really believe that in a market like this, it is a mix of offense and defense. Uh, offense being arranging walkovers, acquisition opportunities. I haven't been able to score any acquisitions. I'm a little frustrated about it in the last 90 days. I think a lot of people still think it's a year ago, but those are offensive activities that we're doing more of, but we're also thinning out a little bit in certain areas to save on costs or maybe not doing certain advertisements that aren't as necessary when we're in an unusually slow fall. So I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to be clear about you know what we're doing. Yeah, then I want to piggyback on something you just said about cutting too quick, which is so important. Uh, you know, we coaching other agents and other brokerages, I find that just because they have one or two or maybe even three months of bad pendings, they start cutting everything, right? They cut all their marketing, they cut people, uh, and then all of a sudden they get busy again. And now they're scrambling to get good help, uh, and they lost opportunity on certain things that they were, you know, uh, doing on the marketing side or on lead generation side. So, you know, we work in 90 day increments, but you gotta let that go. I mean, you can only go so far, but meaning don't make a quick cut or too quick to cut in that first 60 or 90 days, give it another 90 days. And usually things do turn around within that six month period. At least that's what yeah, I thought. You're, the, you're the, right about that. And one of the things I've been saying, sorry, Ken, uh, no worries, one of the things I've been saying is it can't stay this slow. You know, the last 60 days, I think another 30, Let's face it, this is the slowest fall probably since 2010. Statistically, it's the slowest fall for uh, buyers since 2012, sellers since 2000. But it can't stay like this. If, if it stayed like this, in the next 12 months, it'd be the least amount of home sales in 200 years. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So, you know, when we normally see periods of slowness, like after COVID, it's three, four, five weeks. This is turning into like nine weeks. But once we get past to the first of the year, it'll pick up. And Willie's 100% right that you can't go overreacting now and then not be able to service the realtors and service your business once we get after the first of the year. Yeah, yeah the, the way that we've been uh, looking at it, uh, very similar. COVID came. We did all our cuts and we negotiated with every type of vendor we could. And what things could we cut that wouldn't, you know, 
be a problem for the associates or changes that we could make. And, you know, we all did things like that or repurpose offices. So now, you know, if you miss something and there's something you wanted to take care of or get rid of, you have a free pass for a little while. But essentially, instead, I said, let's forget about the cutting. You know, we've done that. Let's look at five core areas where we can improve business and we brought all our managers together for a little mini retreat um this is from about 90 days ago and we said 20 percent less transactions next year that's the types of numbers we're hearing so you know do we just roll over and play dead no so that means let's increase the, the productivity of individual associates by 20 percent and what are the things to do for that which i won't break those down uh, increase our average sales price, meaning the markets with the higher prices, can we increase those? Or in the areas with the lower prices, how do we increase the number of units if it's declining? So maybe average price is a little bit easier. Aging count, of course, is key. And there's nothing that draws people like success. So if the first two help, the third one is brokerage fee. And I'm not going to discuss brokerage fee to violate anything, but um it, you know that's an important one and then finally uh referrals the referral business is an amazing opportunity and you know we have one and a half people full time just driving incoming and outgoing referrals and we also have a lifro and don't forget your lifros which is licensed for referrals only um and we just are rolling in uh on friday a another lifro set a company had in the People are retiring, so we're bringing in all the referral associates. And the first thing that we're doing is calling and saying, we're thrilled that you're with us and we'll try to make it easy for you to refer business. And by the way, if you thought of becoming a realtor at this time, this is the best time to learn. You know, you know people who came in the business a year and a half ago, it was kind of like you go to uh, Las Vegas for the first time and you win 3000 bucks and you think you're a genius and it's the easiest thing in the world. But look around the Bellagio, they did not build that on the winners, but they let you win the first time. So then you don't know how hard it is and people came into real estate, they don't know what to do. The concept of you list it on Thursday, you have a, a broker open house, Sunday a public open house, then highest and best offers Tuesday at 5 p.m. That's not the real world. And so now that you know that's left the arena, how do you really prospect? How do you create mind share? And you know, mind share leads to market share. And uh we're but we're really looking at things of how to increase revenues. I think it has to start with the manager. So we're getting total buy-in from the managers or accountability, and they're bringing it to the associates. And finally, most brokerages focus on the new people. They're always like, bring people in, bring them in, focus on them, train them, get them better, get them going. And as soon as they get going, when they start to get a few million in production, the companies forget them and they go to the new ones. And that's when they become most vulnerable. So the new associates don't get a lot of like, me time, they can aspire to have that. So when they get to a level of productivity, so um, there's a lot of focus on our higher producers. And that's one of the secrets is uh, we do it backwards. I love that. Such great insights. I mean, I think key takeaway here, to your point, Anthony, defense is important. We need to be thinking strategically and intentionally about cost savings but not cutting the growth levers to the business, right? And, you know, it feels like yesterday when we were going into the pandemic, obviously we have a, a sales organization at Inside Real Estate too. I remember those conversations. The market was panicking. Brokers are looking to cut spend. Agents are looking to cut spend. And within a couple months, we had this surge of people coming in saying, there's opportunity in this, right? I'm going to double down. I'm going to invest in my business when others are pulling back. And within a few months, those people were so far ahead, right? And I think we see that at every level in the industry, right? With even take take a listing agent that's really going the extra mile to promote the listing, right? Anthony doing the open houses. Ken, you mentioned boosting properties, posting to social media, really leveraging those as assets to grow their business versus the folks that are kind of saying, oh, I, I want to save a penny here. I'm going to cut back here. You can't cut the growth levers to the business, right? Willie, you, you had some good feedback on this. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Anthony. 
No, don't be sorry. One thing I was going to add that Ken made me think of when he talked about Lifros, which I've never heard of, licensed for referral only. We have a separate a company for that as well, but I've never heard of that phrase. And I saw Willie write it down right away. So I'm up to uh, I'm up to three separate right. sticky notes. I should have just grabbed my damn notebook. But anyway, uh, what I want to point out is that Ken made me think of. As broker owners, this is your time to get your agent's attention. When agents are busy, you know, March to September is a tough time to get the attention of the busier, bigger agents, okay? When we're in an unusually slow period of time like right now, if you think you can do better with referrals, intercompany referrals, for example, is something that we've put a lot of focus on in the last in the last like year and a half, and they've literally done this. They've just increased every single month. And Ken made me think of that. So as a broker owner, think about the things that you think the agents can improve on. Like he said, for referrals, think about the other income opportunities. Like we have an agent referral program with, hey, you bring other realtors in, you get a you know a few hundred bucks a closing, whatever. Whatever it is that you want the agents to improve on, now is your time to get their attention, teach them, preach it, and then see it kick into gear because they're not as busy and they'll actually listen to you and come into the meetings. They've got the time, they've got the headspace to actually go and implement these things that you've been preaching. Um, Willie, just wanted to come back to you real quickly because this is an area you had some good insights on as well, just in terms of where to double down. I know you're focused very much on lead generation, lead conversion. What tweaks can you make to that since that is a big kind of profit lever within the brokerage? Talk to us a little bit about how you're investing and how you're doubling down there. Yeah, I, I just think it's been too easy over the last couple of years. I mean, you put a post on Facebook, you do a video on Facebook, these agents would get phone calls from their from their database, right? And it was just too easy. What they got away from was the basics, the personal notes, the phone calls, you know, doing the CMA annual calls to their database. But really doubling down, the one thing that we took this year is that a lot of them have had all these leads over the years and email addresses. And they just kind of have them in, I don't know where, where they put them, but they have all these email addresses and they're not using them. So what we started doing is collecting email addresses, uh, just our own internal stuff here. We came up with 27,000. We and then we screened that down from uh, 45,000 emails, scrubbed them again, uh, up against Never Bounce, and had all valid emails. About 24,000. Sorry, it was 24,000 emails. We've been now every week sending out uh, consumer emails to those 24,000, having them come back for uh, cost market analysis. Uh, you know, finding information on local homes for sale. And we're getting a lot of traffic. So now I'm doing that with the help the agents as well, having them do that. The other thing is that, you know, I tell them all the time is who's your who's your top hundred dream client? Right? Put together your dream client list. Who is that? Write them down on paper, start marketing to them twice a month. Forget about once a month, do it twice a month. Send them a uh, like Anthony said, an article on something, send them information on their home, send them a magnet calendar, uh, you know, this time of the year. Keep getting in their face so you're top of mind. So when things do switch, which they will, and especially the next, you know, the springtime here coming up, you want to be top of mind for them. But I'm having agents really do that and also go after their dream neighborhoods. You know, what's the neighborhood that you love to have a listing in? Well, I really love to have it in here, and there's 500 uh, homes in that neighborhood. Okay, double down, double down on that, put your money into that, and start being top of mind, giving them good value, not just postcards. But giving them information on their home, giving them information on what's going on in the marketplace, giving them information on you, a newsletter about you and your family and things that you do so that they get to know you, right, like you and trust you and will call you for business. And that's we're starting to see a lot of traction with that right now. Love that. Yeah, there's gold in the database. I think so many people focus on lead generation. They think it's pay-per-click or they think it's online leads. There's there's opportunities in, in the database if you reach out, if you use those tools to Ken's point, you know, to engage folks, send a mass video message, a mass text message, offer them something of value. Great way to generate leads and drive new business. Love that. All right, let's jump into um, something that's come up in every single one of these topics, which is recruiting, right? So I, I'm going to steal this from you, Ken. If you're not growing, you're shrinking. Always be closing. Always be recruiting, right? And I think this means not just recruiting new folks into the brokerage, but Willie, you touched on this constantly recruiting the agents that you already have, right? right. Um, let's jump into this further. What are what are some of the strategies that you guys are using to um, recruit agents, both new and the ones that you have existing within your companies today? Anthony, over to you. 
I didn't know I was going to bring something up. So this is a flyer that we have that we give out to the agents. And it talks about how uh, when they send a referral in, they can get $500 per transaction for the first uh, three transactions that an agent does who they bring into the company. That thing works. And every year we recognize the winner who refers the most agents. Willie came to our annual event the last couple of years and he saw us recognize uh, the agents that bring in the most referrals. It works and part of it is the money, but part of it is these people like winning. Willie said sales contests, right? They like winning. So create contests, competitions that help and that will get the agents engaged in the recruiting. Uh, as far as recruiting as a whole, you are either growing or you're dying, period. Uh, we went through a very unusually slow period of recruiting top agents, probably August, September, October. And I was like, what is going on here? And luckily in the last six weeks, a lot of people are making moves and we've brought over a lot of agents and really had some good growth. But you have to do it all the time. You have to dial all the time. And now that uh, and owners, CEOs, you got to pick the phone up too, folks. We have a business development team. They do it every day, but nobody's more effective than saying, hi, I'm the owner or saying who you are and they know you're the owner, right? I went down to Connecticut on Saturday morning, early six o'clock. I headed down there, visited the new branch office that we had, that we have, uh, took out a top agent in the market for breakfast, drove home, two hours and 20 minutes, radio didn't go on once, not one time. I dialed the entire time. I called 40 agents in the market, left messages, um, connected with some, some I, that got pushed off to Monday and Tuesday. By Tuesday night, I had connected with everybody, over 40 people. And I set up a bunch of appointments for our business development team. You know, I can't personally meet with everybody, but I know we're in a new market. The old trick of, hi, I'm calling from Lamacchio Realty and Anthony told me I should call you. It's not as effective uh, as, hi, I'm Anthony Lamacchio from Lamacchio Realty. It's not. Right, and, and that's why using this for what it was originally intended for, which is this, dialing and doing this, this amazing thing that people have gotten away from, it works better than anything, and I, and I eat it up. And I like to do it also because I practice what I preach. Speaking of practicing what you preach, this is, this is another one, Ken, I'm gonna call on you because I know you, you walk the walk, you don't just talk the talk, you've, you've had some great insights about how you kind of showcase to agents and teams coming into your brokerage, how you use the tools that your brokerage offers and how that's going to you know, benefit their business. And I don't, I don't know that a lot of broker owners can necessarily do that and actually dive into the CRM, dive into some of these tools and show them firsthand. I know you've had a lot of success with that. Tell us a little bit more about that strategy. So what we do is when we meet with people, uh, we don't, call it interview we we say we're going to give them a, a, a look uh, under the covers or behind the curtain and see what makes us tick and we show them the tools and we bring them in as though they were a potential client so one of the things we do is we show the life cycle so as um we bring in an associate who we're trying to recruit we say let me show you how our tool works and i put them in as a new client and then I sort of go back and forth from the screen that they're looking at to their phone, to my phone, and I see the experience. And then uh, we run a little report on them through the system and it shows me their LinkedIn profile, their Facebook profile and rates them as a potential client, which is probably gonna be very low because they're not likely looking to buy or sell at the moment. And then we give them the value of their property and they get that automated email. Then we set them up for a market report. Then I set them up for an email alert. And then I go through lots of the other tools that we have. And by the time we see it, they're thinking, if I go somewhere else, I'm not gonna have any of these tools. And we want to bring in people that are gonna be inspired to use what we're providing. So um, that's, a really really good way to use it so i'm not out there canvassing for listings and you know going after buyers and if i was i think and nobody should join our company uh but uh i'm trying to show them how to use the tool so i'm very adept at it but i'm using it from a different perspective i'm using it to inspire others to actually use it for you know for real and you know it's working and the results uh are there so uh, you know, I think that's just really fun. So we actually also, we created an intranet to make it very, very easy 
Um, so if you're going to go to meet with the seller, you go there and click copy the presentation and you always get our most up to date uh, listing proposal which was updated actually about an hour and a half ago. So if you did it yesterday, it's old news and you'll have a new one. Um, and that, that's an on-screen presentation. Then there's a marketing proposal letter that they get. Or, um, and it, it has, I'm just looking at it. So we have, you know, sections with all kinds of training, listing training, selling training, new to the team, and then all the onboarding kinds of thing. And by the way, not new to the business, new to the team, because if it's an experienced associate, they don't want to be new agent, new to the team. Um, videos, all kinds of presentations that we've made so that they can go through and see what we've created, or forms. And so we have a form, uh, request social media for an open house, for a notable transaction, for a testimonial, for an interesting closing, for a new associate. And as they click, um, you know, open house, it'll pop up the appropriate questions like the date and the time and all that, um, or to place a referral or to uh, refer an associate so that you can get paid. But I took a note on what Anthony said, which is we're going to have, we call them our ambassadors. It's an ambassador club and we have a fun event for the ambassadors. They get, you know, a little money, but now I'm going to have an ambassador of the year. That's a great idea. Um, and then we have links to events and, you know, all kinds of things. But uh, it's actually designed that if I, uh, uh, am a seller and I bring you my proposal or my presentation, you're going to be maybe interested in it, but your antenna is up. This is what the realtor is telling me that they think I want to hear. So when we have a listing package, I'll give a nice little secret, one of our secrets to success, why we've been a listing company. We also give the associate guide to stellar results marketing your listings. And if you put those two things next to each other, the pre proposal letter to the seller or the associate guide, the seller's always like, oh, let me see that associate guide. And I will tell you, it's a beautiful piece. And it shows exactly what has to happen and setting them up for showing time and setting them up for the moving concierge and uh, how to label the photographs and the individual website for and just everything that happens but in this really nice way and um the, the, that's what the seller wants to see and that's our accountability guide for the associate but the real value of it is that's what buys the listing that's what gets the signature and uh, we do the same thing for recruits we give them that look under the hood by showing them the associate intranet and we have another one but this really is a, is just a recruiting and listing intranet and it works for sellers as well very compelling i love that willie just shifting over to you you had a great comment earlier around out educating your competition when it comes to recruiting i know you've done a lot of great content educational content both in person and virtual for existing agents but also recruiting new agents into the brokerage Tell us more about those programs. How have you, yeah. how have you set that up? How do you operate those? Yeah, I mean, for years, right, we always felt that all this information was, you know, private and we had to keep it close to our, our hearts and and uh, we never shared it. And I'll give credit to John Chaplack and I know Anthony uh, the same. Uh, yeah. He taught us just to educate, educate, educate and just give it away because they're not, most of them are not going to do it anyway, uh, which is so true. But you are going to find people that are going to take it and leverage it and, and have success with it. So we've been doing that now over the last probably four or five years now and just giving out a lot of content. I put together a 24 week program with six different modules from lead gen to work with sellers, work with buyers, contract to close, repeat and referral business, uh, social media. And we just broke it down into 24 weeks. And we every Wednesday at one o'clock, uh, not only do we give it to our agents, but we also give it to agents in my marketplace and throughout the country. And as a result of that, I've had a lot of comments from a lot of these uh, agents that They've been watching our stuff for the last couple of years. They came over uh, or they got more information from our uh, training than they do from their own company. Uh, so it, it really does work. So I, I would say from an education standpoint, if you're a broker and you're looking to attract more agents and retain more agents, you want to definitely do that. And, and Anthony, uh, he's one of the best that I've seen out there in the business doing the same thing. Well, thank you. But uh, how about your event that you did two weeks ago or two months ago? You did, Willie did an event. 
you know, I've been doing crushing and real estate events twice a year for, I don't know, three, four years now, but Willie did an awesome event out in Albany. I, I was uh, fortunate to be the keynote speaker, but they had panelists and speakers and, and on the heels of that event, Willie recruited a bunch of agents from other companies. And that's yeah, exactly what like, happens at our, our events yeah. as well. We had 250 agents come and since then we put nine agents on. So um, some of them were already in the mix, but again, that level of education brought them to the next level. Well, imitation is the highest form of flattery. I'm gonna come to your events and then I'm gonna try to duplicate them. I think it's a fantastic idea. Thursday, February 9th, Crush It in Real Estate event here in uh, Massachusetts. Alyssa, you're invited as well. There's, there's planes that go from Denver to Boston and I'll personally drive you to Worcester. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Good stuff. Well, and I, again, the theme here, you hit on this earlier, Ken, but, you know, mind share is market share. And I think all three of you are very successfully getting into the minds of you know, the agents in your market and, and delivering really valuable content. Um, one of the things that I've seen across all three of you, too, is use of video in doing that, right? Anthony, you're huge on social media. Ken, I've seen you do tons of, you know, whether it's video, email, video, text messaging. Willie, I know you mentioned some of your events are, are virtual and delivered via video as well. How are you guys tapping into video and really taking that to the next level in your recruiting effort? We're doing something pretty cool with video for sellers and also for recruits where we have a series of videos and it's an individual sort of web page and built into the video, it will say, you know, hi, Anthony, take a look at what we created for you. And it can put, you know, your name on a business card and on a flyer or for a seller, it would be, you know, Anthony's home, blah, blah, blah. And, um, and then we have different uh, videos, how, you know, how we use the uh, chalk digital and uh, just, um, having this custom video where your name is on it and when you get an email about it or a text if you click you see your name is into the video it gets people very intrigued to click on it so we send these to people as they uh, graduate from real estate licensing school we send them to people when we have closings with them if our associate thinks it'd be a good fit for the company we send them to for sale by owners we send them to expireds so very customized uh video and uh that's that's one way we're doing it that i haven't seen any other broker do it the way i got it was my kids were applying to colleges and um uh we got this amazing thing from uh pit a couple years ago for my older son and it was like eight in here and eight in here and eight in here and um it was so compelling i was like this video is great. You should go to this school. And uh, of course he didn't. And uh, he went to Emory instead. But um, the bottom line is, uh, I was like, I'm going to figure this out. And it took a lot of effort. Uh, it's not an easy thing to do, but uh, it's going to be a tool that no one else in your marketplace is going to have if uh, you can figure out how to do it, which we did. Personalization. What other tips, Anthony? I know I know you're big on social, big on on video content. What can you tell to to kind of inspire somebody to jump onto that bandwagon? You know what? Something that I learned this year, I finally started focusing on Instagram, which sounds ridiculous. I mean, I've been very strong with Facebook. Our Crush It in Real Estate page has 44,000 followers, 40,000 likes, which is kind of interesting. The competitors follow it, but they all don't want to like it. Um, but I finally in June started focusing on Instagram, but I made it in, in Instagram. I do personal stuff, but I started doing what I call crush it mindset videos. And the reason that I did it is I found that every time I was on the crush it and real estate page and I would talk about anything related to mindset, I'd get all these comments and people would love it. And they would text me and say, oh, my God, you you lifted me up this morning. You made me feel better. I I feel more upbeat. And I'm like, and for me as a leader and like Ken and Willie and you, we're all doers. So to us, we're like, I don't need to listen to a Anthony do a video to get fired up. But to an agent, some of them, it really does help them get going. And, and I have to say, it's helped my Instagram presence and several, several agents have said to me across the country, I love your mindset videos. And I'm like, wait, wait, do you mean my crush it videos that I do on the market and stuff and different tips on Facebook? They're like, 
no, 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 those ones you do on Instagram. And I'm like, because, you know, and, and I don't always feel like I say things that are that earth shattering, but people like it. And I think the point that us owners, us leaders in the business have to remember is there are people that are starving for that stuff. They want to pick me up. They want, they, they need that. So fill that void. I mean, what's the old saying? Give the people what they want, right? Give your audience what it wants. They, they want to hear me talk about mindset. I'm doing it about once a week. And most of the time I'm just going live. I'm not even doing fancy reels, but every damn time I do it, I pick up 50 followers within six hours. So don't be shy about putting those things out there and don't overthink what content you should put out. Just the way that I do it, people always say to me, how do you think of so many video ideas for your different pages? I'm like, honestly, I listen, I listen. I'm like, what do you mean? I'm like, I know, I know I talk a lot. I know you hear my videos. You think I'm always talking. I'm listening 10 times more. I listen to our realtors. I listen to friends like Willie and Ken. I listen to other realtors around the country that are training customers of ours. The problems that they tell me they're having, I talk about them on the videos and how to solve them. Because I know if some realtors in our area and some realtors around the country are struggling with a certain issue, everybody is. So when I do a video, bang, everybody's on it. And that's how I was able to grow the presence. And you know, we also are not at all shy about email, about marketing, all those kinds of things. Alyssa, Alyssa's shaking her head because she's probably, I think she's on our email list. So we're not shy about it. We, we put the content out and we have thousands and thousands of um, emails across the country of realtors. When it complements those other channels, right? Willie, you were talking about this, when they've seen your face, when they feel like they know who you are and then they get the email or they get the piece of mail or they get the text, it, it resonates with them, right? Because they feel like there's a connection there. So. I love that. Well, guys, we're running out of time. I'm going to wrap us up here just to recap. You know, will 250,000 agents leave the business? Maybe. Sounds like that's that's probable. What can you be doing as a broker owner to make sure that your agents stay with you, stay loyal, stay productive, dig in with them, increase their productivity, right? Be thinking strategically about your investments in the brokerage, both where you cut, where you get a little more conservative, where you double down. And then, of course, always be recruiting, right, both externally and internally within the agent base. Um, to close this out here, I'm going to throw you guys a little curveball. Let's do a little rapid fire. 30-second words of wisdom to close us out here. Willie, let's start with you. Any tidbits you'd like to leave the audience with? Yeah, I mean, this is a great time of the year. Just clear your desk, declutter everything you have in front of you, write down your goals, create your own economy. Don't listen to the news. Don't listen to anything that's going on out there. You can do whatever you want to do. You just got to double down on the activities, get back to the basics, get accountability and execute. Love it. Ken, over to you, 30 seconds. What do you want to leave them with? Take time to think and act. We've gotten in this like, like a gerbil going through the wheel and so busy going through the motions that be very conscious about thinking. Taking those thoughts and taking from all today, one, two or three things Max are going to use think decide what you're going to do put it down and execute Let's love it anthony bring us home acquisitions and walkovers right now the next next three four months is going to be a tremendous time for it and if you are in a cash crunch which many brokerages are do not say to yourself i can barely afford to get by how am i going to afford to buy anyone else <laughs> oftentimes it can be cheaper than you think because you can pay people by way of earnout. And when you take, if you've got 200 agents and you bring in 100 from another company to your company, the, with the economies of scale, you're going to have more money on your hands than you realize you might have. Don't tell yourself you can't do it. Don't think that way. You can do it. So get on offense. Find the opportunities. Change means opportunity. I love it. Fantastic. Thank you all for your time today. Just absolute legends in this space. Really appreciate all your insights. Uh, very valuable. Have a fantastic afternoon, everyone, and happy holidays. Take care. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you.